it's time to work on the arm bones. Hide everything except the left FK bone, forward kinematic bones. Create some simple controllers and align them in position and orientation with FK bones. Do not forget to edit the shape only in the edit spline to avoid any changes on the controller transform. Name them shoulder FK controller, forearm FK controller, wrist FK controller and constrain the bones orientation to them. Link the controllers like this and link the shoulder FK controller to the clavicle bone. Then use freeze transform to store the transform of the controller. It was our FK setup. Let's move on to the IK bones. Select and isolate them. Create a HI solver and name it ARM-IK helper. Link it to the root controller and freeze its transform. Because we want to have only shapes as controllers, create another controller for IK as well. Align it with the solver and constraint solver position to this controller. Name it ARM-IK controller. First link the controller to the root controller and then freeze the transform. Now select and separate IK and FK bones using their controller. What we need here is a reliable solution to blend these controllers. As you probably know, we can add as many objects as we need to orientation constraint and change their weights. Select the shoulder bone and constraint its orientation to the IK bone. Now in the motion tab, we can add FK bone as well. The order is important here, so keep it in mind to select IK bone first and then add FK to it. Now we can easily blend these values. This is how we switch between IK and FK. We can use reaction manager or wire parameters to control the weights of the constraint. We need another shape to control the orientation of the clavicle. I can use a simple shape and constraint the orientation of the clavicle bone to the controller. Name it clap controller and link it to the spine tree controller so it moves with the chest. And now the bad news, we should do the same for the right side. But before that, let's do something about the kneecap. Create two shapes like this. Link the big one to the smaller one. Name them kneecap controller and kneecap dash face controller. Now align the kneecap dash base controller to the kneecap bone in position and orientation. Constraint its orientation to the thigh and knee. Now you can edit the pivot if you want. Select the kneecap controller and align its pivot to the kneecap bone in position and orientation. 
constrain the orientation of the kneecap bone to the kneecap controller. And finally, link the kneecap dash base controller to the tie. We created a controller to drive the rotation of the kneecap bone based on the angle between the tie and the knee. And our kneecap controller is for adjusting the rotation if we need it. Most of the controllers we made are just for rotation and we don't want them to move or scale, so spend some time locking them. Now I will do the right side at high speed. Note that you will have to rotate the z-axis of the pivot by 180 degrees. See you in the next part.